going on, Vinyl Community? Found a new turntable today. Very, very cool. It seems like people like when I shoot equipment videos with receivers and tape decks and CD players. This turntable is something that I rarely come across. Very cool, and I thought you might like to take a look. Come on, let's go check it out. It's not all that often that I happen to stumble upon Bang and Olufsen, or B&O, and I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right, turntables. And this one is a super nice, super clean Bang & Olufsen Biogram 5000. This is a very, very cool turntable manufactured between 1983 and 1986 and came in the aluminum finish uh, that you see here. So the cover is plastic on top. It has an aluminum bar in the middle or aluminum textured and then um, recessed grooves in the back. The reason I'm holding it closed like this is the only one flaw I can seem to find with this turntable so far is that the little piece of magnet or magnetic catch inside that holds it shut and when you press the open button on the front is missing. So if I let go it will come up. Now this front panel is actually also buttons. On the left you have an open button so if you push that the bar moves and the lid will open and on the right play. We'll get to that in a minute. When I let my finger go the cover will open and you'll see what is really one of the first and truly cool features about this turntable. It is not only a turntable, it's a spaceship. See that? Very, very cool feature. There's actually a light inside. Wow, now you can really get into playing some records in the dark. So with the lights back on, let's take a look at some of the cool features of this turntable. Again, bear in mind, this is super new to me. I only got this very recently, so even I'm on the learning curve with this. But lifting the cover up, you can see the inside light and again from the research I was able to do it seems like not only are these little lifts or lift maybe there's only one not always fully functional but oftentimes uh, the posts that I've seen with this for sale on everybody's favorite frame of reference eBay this light is also out not the case in this unit in this unit everything is fully functional so let's go ahead and zoom in on one of the first neat things that I wanted to share with everyone and that's the platter this is a belt driven turntable. Of course the belt um, being underneath, if we take the platter off, you can see inside it's actually got pretty detailed directions over here on how to remove the platter which is very nice. But also the belt doesn't seem to be at all deteriorated. It's in really really nice shape. What I do here is just the tiniest bit of squeaking when it turns up and I guess that tells me it just needs to be oiled or lubricated which should be a pretty quick thing to do with some synthetic oil. This particular one does need a stylus. Now you can see the tone arm assembly here is nothing like a standard Pioneer tone arm assembly or a Techniques tone arm assembly where it has um, kind of a catch or a stand here to hold the tone arm. You still have the counterweight back here where you can set the weight of the tone arm. There doesn't seem to be any anti-skate control here so I'm guessing that's somehow self-controlled. And then the tone arm really just hovers or rests here. The research I did showed that this came with the um, B&O MMC4 cartridge and stylus combination. This one, the previous owner had upgraded it to the MMC5 cartridge and stylus combination. Again, the stylus is in there and the cartridge seems good, but the stylus seems like it either needs to be re-tipped, which is not something I've ever gotten into or completely replaced. Unfortunately again the cartridge and stylus can be a little bit pricey on these and is completely proprietary. Now for a closer look at the buttons. Down here on the front you have the play button. Up here we have Q, 33 RPM, 45 RPM, and repeat. Now a quick note on the connector for the Biogram 5000. This turntable actually part of the Biomaster Bang & Olufsen uh, stereo component series and does not have standard RCA connectors on it. It actually has this 5-pin DIN connector which would have mated perfectly with the uh, B&O receiver. As far as I understand there are converters out there available very inexpensively that change this 5-pin DIN into your standard RCA plugs so you could use this turntable with a modern receiver. 
So for a quick demonstration of this turntable, we'll go ahead and pull out the Bay City rollers. They haven't dusted off their roller skates in years. The little hub in the middle that is set up for a 45 RPM record will automatically depress. Now since this turntable and tone arm and cartridge does not have a stylus, we're just going to get it into the Q position. And we can do that by hitting the Q button, which will cause the turntable to spin up, the arm to move over, and it now hovers over track one. One thing I definitely notice about this turntable is how fast that little arm moves. If you just saw that, and we'll do it again, sending it back just by hitting play, we'll make the tone arm go back, and the platter will come to a full stop. That platter comes to a full stop about a full 45 seconds sooner than any Pioneer turntable I've ever owned, which you kind of wait for it, or if you're like some that are very familiar with vinyl, you kind of catch it as it spins off. Another quick demonstration of that, again, hitting the Q button, watch how fast that tone arm moves over. Yes, sir, I am ready to play. So now if we hit the Q button again, it will drop onto the record. Right now we'll hear a bunch of grinding. Not that I'm crazy about this Bay City Rollers record, but why ruin something if we don't have to? And without any stylus, we're not going to hear anything. So at this point, again, if we hit 45, we go into 45 RPM, 33 RPM. As far as I can tell, which means just visually, it does look like it keeps speed all right. There is no stroboscope feature on this, like on many turntables, so I simply can't tell. And without having the converter for the five pin adapter, I certainly can't hear it and tell you. Again, the repeat button here will light up and flash. So again, I'm not quite certain just yet if that's for a single track repeat, although I believe so. Hit it again and it stays a steady red which tells me it's most likely for full LP repeat on that particular side. A final note on the turntable, it appears from the research that I was able to do on this on the internet that when this was in fact connected to the BO Master 5000, it sounds a bit like a kitchen appliance, that this BOGram 5000 turntable offered um, a full infrared remote control which the turntable would respond to in turning a record on or off or starting the playback of a record. Plans for this particular turntable? Not sure yet. When it fell into my lap, uh, the price was right. I couldn't say no. It worked well and it cleaned up beautifully. That said, if there is somebody out there in the vinyl community that is interested in owning a B&O turntable, certainly feel free to send me a PM, um, give me an idea of what might be a good trade in your mind or along similar lines. It would seem that in order to bring this into fully functional condition, all that would be needed is either a new stylus or a re-tipping of that stylus. But that's it everyone, just wanted to share it with you. Feel free to leave a comment if you have one and thanks for watching everyone, take care. Hey, calling all gear. <laughs>